Prioritarianism is an attractive idea. It's an idea about how to weight the interests of different people when engaged in some sort of ethical analysis of different policies, such as cost-benefit analysis or, or any other broadly consequentialist approach. So just a simple way of uh, thinking about what it is, it's simply the idea that the interests of the worst off get extra weight. So when you're weighing up how to distribute costs and benefits, generally you'd like to maximize the amount of benefit and minimize the amount of cost. But prioritarianism says benefits and costs that accrue to the worst off get weighted more heavily than benefits or costs that accrue to the relatively better off. Okay. Uh, and a famous extreme version of this idea is the Maximin principle. And that says it's really only the interests of the worst off count. Right. Now, many people think this idea is too extreme, the Maximin idea, because that suggests you can never trade off a slight cost to one of the worst off in order to achieve even a massive gain to the relatively less well off. Um, so many think too extreme, don't want this, but are still attracted to this sort of idea. The point of this video is to briefly explain an objection that affects the whole family of prioritarian ideas, including the extreme version, but also the, the more modest versions. So to make our example concrete, let's think about Polynesia. And we're going to be thinking about policy choices in the context of climate change. So many Polynesian islands are likely to be particularly badly affected by climate change, particularly the, the relatively more low-lying ones. So imagine a group of six such nations, uh, or not, they're not all independent nations, but six such islands uh, or island groups, got together to discuss how they should um, respond to climate change, what the greatest dangers are for them, and so on. And they commissioned some scientific reports, and the scientific reports say it turns out that among you, there is one island uh, group that is particularly vulnerable to climate change, and they're vulnerable because they're going to suffer outright crop failure. So people are going to be starving. Uh, it's going to be very, very costly to provide the alternative foods that they need to import from elsewhere because you're a far-flung island. Um, that's the, the really big concern. The rest of you, you're going to suffer relatively modest uh, harms. Yes, there'll be some property damage. Yes, there'll be heat waves. Yes, uh, the crops will be uh, affected, but you won't have that devastating crop failure that affects the one. So let's say we were to try to um, do a cost-benefit analysis for these nations that are having a, a discussion of what uh, is going to happen to them. So our nations are Samoa, Tonga, Tuvalu, Hawaii, the Cook Islands, and French Polynesia. And the advice is if you do nothing, the outcome is going to be a very substantial cost, this crop failure for Samoa, but all the other uh, island groups within Polynesia will just suffer a cost of minus one unit. You know, you see if that is minus one billion dollars if you want to put it in monetary terms, but we can just say minus one to indicate a modest, in relative terms, cost, a, very, a cost well worth avoiding, but it's relatively modest. The scientific advisors go on to say, now it turns out we think you can address either the problems of Samoa, or you can address the problems of the other islands. Because these problems are somewhat different, they are quite different solutions, and you really have to commit yourself all out to one or the other. So our two other policy options are help Samoa or help the others. And help Samoa, you see, it will reduce the serious impact of crop failure on Samoa so that they, instead of suffering a minus eight loss, they suffer a loss of minus four. But all the other nations have to just endure the loss of, uh, of one unit of value. The other proposal to help the others will eradicate the damage done by climate change. And so they will get a score of zero, in effect, after we uh, help them. But Samoa will be left suffering with the effects of, uh, of that climate change. What would traditional cost-benefit analysis say if we were not prioritarians? Well, you simply calculate the total of all the costs and the benefits. And let's suppose that this is all the costs and the benefits. Well, then doing nothing is most costly of all, negative 13. Helping Samoa, well, it, it's improved things. Now the cost is only nine. But if you help the others, you'll do better yet. Because there are five other nations and you gain one unit for each, when you add it up, it turns out to be best to help the others. That's the best way of maximizing the benefit relative to costs. That's what the traditional view would be. Now, how would a prioritarian give different advice? What would they suggest? 
Well, their suggestion would be you go through each row of the table and in each row you find the nation that is worst off and distinguish it from the rest. And the idea is that the worst off nation, well, its interests should get weighted relatively heavily. So let's just leave them at being weighted 100%. And all the other not so badly off nations, their interests get weighted less. So we're going to multiply them by some discount factor. So I'm going to just arbitrarily suppose, and of course you could do different degrees of this to distinguish different levels, but I've made my example simple because in every example there's a worst off and the rest, and the rest are all equally well off. Okay, I'm going to suppose that what you do for the ones who are relatively less badly off, you multiply by 60% the impacts on them. That's to represent that, well, the impact on the worst off is weighted 100%, but relatively better off nations, their impacts are um, uh, diminished in their relative importance. That, hence they're discounted, you multiply by 60%. So how's that going to look? Well, we can do this, we can sort of just do a nice simple function. I'm going to multiply by 60% for that one. And if I fill down, I'm going to do it, that's doing the calculation for those three cells. Now I fill across, and I'll do it in the calculation for all of these cells. And I'll copy those values and I'll just paste them all in over my original values. Great. Ignore that, those are now incorrect. But the sums have now automatically updated. After we've weighted those impacts on the relatively better off nations by 60%, they now don't count for as much. So if you look at the overall situation, well, it gets a score of minus 11. If you look at the case where you help some lower, it now comes out as minus 7. And if you help the others, it comes out as minus 8. Notice it's changed our preference. Before, helping the others was the ideal policy, was the policy that maximized benefits relative to costs. Now, helping Samoa comes out as best because this improvement from minus 8 to minus 4 still has full force, but the, um, the badness of leaving these nations at uh, un unhelped, that turns out to have been diminished. Right? So even though you can help them in this one, it's not as big an impact. So it turns out this is the best policy overall. So let's summarize what we've achieved so far, right? So this standard cost benefit analysis, and it recommends help the others. Don't help Samoa, help the others, where Samoa is the worst off. Then we applied a prioritarian version, and it said help Samoa. Why? because the interests of Samoa get weighted relatively heavily, more heavily, so they count for more than the, the interests of the others. So it changes the outcome. Okay, now I want you to imagine that it's a, a different setup altogether. Okay, so come back to imagining our um, Polynesian islands, they get together. Instead of being told, guess what, Samoa, you're in trouble. You're the one who's, uh, who's really going to... Uh, you're the one who's really in strife. Instead, the scientists say, each nation, each island group, I should say, has a one in six chance of crop failure. That's a, a minus eight outcome. And each has a five in six chance of the other milder problems that we mentioned. Some property loss, some lower, some reduced crops, and so on and so forth, but overall a score of minus one for those other costs. And this time, instead of supposing that, each, uh, that all six nations have to get together and uh, decide collectively what they're going to do, suppose that each um, uh, region can decide on its own what to do it can decide to try to address crop failure, or it can try to address the milder problems. So now the sort of decision problem they're facing looks like this. Each and every nation knows that they can adopt one of three policies, do nothing, address crop failure, or address other problems. Oops. And each nation knows that there are two ways things could turn out. It could turn out that their crops fail, or it could turn out that their crops don't fail, but that they face the other problems. And they know that it's about a 
17% chance of this and 83% chance of that. That's a 1 in 6 and a 5 in 6 chance. Okay. Now, if the crops fail and you do nothing, well, then you suffer minus 8. If you've taken steps to address crop failure and the crops fail, well, then you reduce the damage and it's just minus 4. On the other hand, if you try to address crop failure and you reach, have the other problems, well, then it's just minus 1. Yet you're stuck where you were before. And the other policy option is to not do anything about the possibility of crop failure and instead do something about the other problems. And then if that, that's what eventuates, well, then you won't suffer any harm at all. Okay. You can see how this is quite analogous to the situation facing Samoa and other nations. Okay. But now each and every nation faces this, but they just don't know what thing is going to happen to them. Now, conceivably, each and every nation could say, you know what, we've decided to take our chances. We've decided to address the other problems. It's true, if the crops fail, we'll regret our decision perhaps, but taking into account the probabilities, we think it's better to go for the, um, the much more likely gain of avoiding this modest harm than to take a gamble that we're going to suffer the, the big harm and to take steps to address that. Now you may not personally share that intuition, but I take it we, we think that it could be reasonable for a nation to take a risk like that. We have to take risks all the time. Uh, some of us decide to uh, do risky sports like skydiving, and some of us don't. And we think it's legitimate for some of us to make different decisions like this. Or, And as nations, we can make different decisions about risk. We can decide to try more ambitious, more risky projects, or more conservative, less risky projects. So, coming back to our little tally, we had so the standard cost-benefit analysis help the others. Prioritarian help Samoa. Now in this slightly different problem, the individual action case, let's suppose each and every nation says address other problems. Now, final case, collective action with uncertainty. So, imagine all the nations get together, they're talking, and the scientists say, the story, I'm afraid, is a bit more complicated. Turns out, one nation will suffer crop failure. Five, I, I'm, apologies for keep saying nations, I'm just going to keep saying it. Five nations will suffer the other problems. Don't know who will suffer crop failure. Could be Samoa, could be Tonga, could be Tuvalu, could be any one of our six Polynesian island groups. So each individual island group recognise it has a 1 6 chance of crop failure and a 5 6 chance of the other problems. And now collective action is necessary. It's necessary for us to all together take steps to either address the crop failure or address the other problems. So in terms of our cost-benefit tables, this is a little bit like the first one I showed you, where we had, I'll just get rid of the colouring here, okay, where we had six nations across the top. But the problem is, now we really have to put question marks in for all of these, because it's not known whether, let's say I'm the, uh, the government of Samoa, I don't know whether this is our column or this is our column. There's a 1 in 6 chance of this, and 5 in 6 chance that will be one of these ones. So what should we do? Well, this, you can see, is very, very similar to the previous case, where it was individual choices, and where we faced uncertainty. In that case, right, each of us faced, each nation faced, a 17% chance of crop failure, and 83% chance of not. And in that case, I said for the sake of argument, each um, uh, island group decided they preferred to address the other problems. 
If now in a setting where that's what we do collectively, where we know for sure that somebody is going to suffer crop failure, then that would be equivalent to saying, let's help the others. And you can imagine it would be, it could be a unanimous decision. That's what we all would prefer to do. We would all prefer to take our chances and hope that we're not this unlucky nation. We'd all prefer to go for the certain improvement of, remember the unadjusted figures, this was minus one, right? Of eliminating that minus one harm and having zero, even though that brings with it a risk that we have a one in six chance of suffering this very serious harm. So in the collective action case, it could be a unanimous decision to address the other problems. But notice now, the prioritarian would still be giving the same advice as before. The prioritarian would say, hang on, you need to weight the interests of the worst off more seriously. It doesn't matter that you don't know who this worst off nation is. Just by virtue of being the worst off, they get extra weight. Therefore, you should apply the cost benefit analysis. And it says, help some up. This is, should no longer be help some more, of course. This should now be called help crop failure. And this is just help other problems. This turns out to be the optimal action. So imagine a prioritarian walks into this discussion between all six uh, island groups, and they all say, we've had a good think about it, and we've all decided we most prefer this policy. We realize we are each running a risk that we will suffer crop failure, but we've each, each decided and then unanimously collectively decided to run that risk. A prioritarian would have to come in and say, you're making a moral mistake. You all need to divert your efforts towards this policy that will help only one nation and you don't know who. So it turns out that there is a conflict between prioritarianism and between what you might have thought was a very legitimate collective action procedure. That is coming to a unanimous, informed, reasonable decision. Here's another way to put it. If every affected party prefers policy X and prioritarianism rejects policy X, then prioritarianism is absurd. I suggest that's a plausible conclusion to draw from this example.